do that on the chat on the side there, and then uh, we'll take questions uh, about 25 minutes into the call. So if, if for any of you are new to Zoom, uh, welcome to the new way that human beings interact. Uh, and at the bottom of your screen, there's a little icon for chat. If you click on that, you should have access uh, to that part. So there we go. Marcio, Marcus, good morning. They got me like this one day. Guys, I'm gonna just unmute the two of you. Can, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you now. Marcus, you doing okay on audio there? Yes, can you hear me? Can hear you just fine, yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to wait a couple minutes for a few more guests to join us. But I was just saying to everybody as you come in, good morning, welcome. Uh, for those of you I don't know, my name is John Anderson. I'm here uh, with Collaboration Project. Uh, and this call is a partnership between us and Wisconsin Council of Churches. So thanks to them for uh, helping organize this call. Um, and our goal today is really to just to hear from Marcus and Marcio as they have started uh, the Psalm 46 Fund and in my opinion are doing some tremendous work in and through that and the hope today really is just for you all to hear about that work um and this is not a fundraising event but it is hopefully helping inform you about some of the things that are happening through that and whether or not that might be a good opportunity for your faith community so um yeah so maybe we'll take about one or two more minutes because a lot of people are still joining us which is wonderful uh, for those of you just joining us, again, as a reminder, we're going to take questions about halfway through the call, and we'd invite you to add those questions in the chat on the side, and we'll look for, I'll, I'll try to help curate those, uh, Marcia and Marcus, so you can stay focused, but if you want to look at those ahead of time, that's great too. Uh, and we'll look for kind of the, the top questions as if we see some patterns. Um, so there you go. So let me um, just do one quick introduction again now that I think we have quite a few people on the call which is fantastic so welcome again my name is John Anderson I'm here with a collaboration project I'm serving as the executive director there uh, and the founder I guess we're coming up on our one-year anniversary in a couple of weeks which is pretty exciting uh, and our organization exists to try to bring churches together throughout Dane County uh, in service to the greater community. And we see the Psalm 46 Fund as being a really exciting opportunity in the midst of uh, the really challenging times that we face. And our hope today is for you all to hear about it. I know some of you are coming in with a lot more knowledge than others, uh, but I've asked Marcio and Marcus just to share a little bit of why this fund started and what are some of the opportunities and needs that they're seeing and, and uh, kind of hope where things might go from here. So uh, and one more quick shout out to Wisconsin Council of Churches for partnering on this event. Welcome fully to the call, Brianna. Good to have you. Um, and a final word, if you, you are brand new to the call, add your questions along the side on the chat bar as we're going. So Mark, Marcus and Marcio, good morning. How y'all doing? Good morning. Good morning. Now you guys are both like, um, you know, preachers and not the short pre preaching version. So we only have 25 minutes between the two of you right now, and we didn't decide ahead of time who's going to go first. So uh, whoever feels more inspired by the spirit, I think that's your language. How about let's go with that. Go Tell ahead, us a little Mar bit about why this, uh, where did this fund come from? And we'll go from there. Marcio, you go first. Okay, so, um, so my name is Marcio Sierra, and I am the, the pastor at Lighthouse Church in um, you know, when this whole um, situation with the pandemic started, um, I was, you know, I, I'm friends with Marcus, um, who is the pastor of Mount Zion, and um, we both applied for a grant at, um, with the Boys and Girls Club, and I believe both um, Mount Zion and Lighthouse Church got 10000 each to, to help the community. And uh, so we did that together. And then we noticed that we started uh, helping a lot of the same communities, you know, uh, with, with the school at Lighthouse Church, we serve a lot of the African American community. And, and also, you know, we serve a lot of the Hispanic community. And um, on the south side of Madison, there's a lot of the Hispanic population that lives around Mount Zion. And there was this one time that I remember I was helping Marcus um, uh, deliver lunches uh, to, to kids in the neighborhood, to families in the neighborhood, and some families didn't speak uh, any English, you know, and I was there helping to translate. Marcos had lunches, I had milks, and we were kind of bringing the things together and giving them to the families. 
And, um, you know, we uh, selfless ambition. So uh, Henry Sanders with selfless ambition said to us, you know, hey, some churches want to help. But they, they, every time I ask for help, they ask, you know, hey, you know what, what Marcus is doing? What is Lighthouse doing? We can help with that. So I know that Selfless Ambitions talk to uh, High Point Church, uh, Metro Believers Church, City Church, and Asbury Church. And they, uh, they gave uh, 20000 to start this fund. And that's when uh, Marcus and I uh, started talking about helping, uh, working together, creating one fund that would be able to help everybody in the community. You know, it's, it's not only Lighthouse or African American Council of Churches, but it's anybody in the community that is in need. But we were focusing on the Latino and the African American community. So, um, and talking to Marcos, then we decided instead of just doing a Lighthouse and Mount Zion, why don't we just work with the entire African American Council of Churches? And that's how we launched it. We did a video together. We started working together. And um, today we have $85,000. Woohoo! Amen. Yeah, so so uh, I think Marshall said, said it right. Um, I think it, it was from that day when we was out, when we first started, uh, Mount Zion first started giving lunches to the kids, um, that we noticed um, that the cultural differences, yeah, y'all see my son running, he'll be back. Uh, <laughs> the cultural differences uh, when you are trying to meet the needs. Some, some, some homes we went to, um, because we weren't of the same culture, they wouldn't let us in, or they wouldn't, <laughs> or they wouldn't accept what we were given. Uh, uh, but it was good to have Marcel with us. Um, he he was able to speak the same language, and everybody, and, and I think that was just um, a great thing. Uh, we've been uh, since this happened. Um, Mount Zion has been on the front line, um, trying our best to help our community. We still have our food pantry that's open um, once a week. Uh, but also, um, when Marcio brought this to me, I'm not a fundraiser. Uh, I'm a Black Baptist pastor, and all we believe in is tithes and offerings. <laughs> so we don't, we normally don't ask for funding. So I told Marcio, hey, I'm not used to this, so whatever, I'm just following your lead. Uh, and uh, Marcio, he put together the video, and I'm just jumping on with him, and, and, and it has proven to be something that's profitable um, to help um, the overall community. And also we brought on the, all the churches of the African-American Council of Churches, about 18 other churches that are on and that we're trying to help uh, those, not just our members, but the community also. Uh, we put out the application on Friday and on Saturday, we had about seven, 70 uh, requests uh, with over about $20,000 uh, in requests. So, so it is, we see there is a great need a lot of people were, were hurting before this pandemic happened. Uh, and when the pandemic occurred, it caused uh, even more strife and struggle uh, for uh, people in our community. Uh, but I am also grateful and thankful for those who have already um, given towards this fund. Um, none of the funds will stay I, with the AACC. As soon as they come in, we're trying our best to get them out. Uh, we're not paying anyone to administrate. We're not paying anyone to get the funds out. All we're trying to do is get the funds to people who are in need. Uh, we're not asking for a lot. All we're asking, if you have a need and you can show proof of that need, uh, we will uh, try our best to give you whatever we have to meet that need. Uh, so I want to tell you all thank you uh, for joining today and prayerfully you uh, take an interest uh, and be willing to help us uh, reach um, this community our communities is and it's just, and it's just not um black people it's just not hispanic people it's just not white it's the whole community that are in need uh, and those who are less fortunate than us so as john would say i can keep going on and on but i'm going to stop right there <laughs> and uh thank you again for uh, uh attending and john can i say one more thing absolutely uh, please do. you know so so that the latino community with the pastor the christian community we don't, unfortunately, we don't have any type of association or, or group, um, you know, for the, the Latino pastors. We're still trying to, to come together. But um, so, so the fund, everything that we raise is half is for Lighthouse to help, you know, the community and half is for the African American Council of Churches. But um, just know that I have spoken with pretty much all the Hispanic pastors, letting them know about this fund. And they are already sending people from their communities to Lighthouse. Um, Lighthouse already has um, about 220 uh, uh, requests, families, requests for funding. And, and Lighthouse has already given about 18,000 
um, you know, in funding. So, uh, and I know like Mount Zion, they do lunches every day. They do the food pantry. We're doing hot lunches every day. So, so both churches were really working in the community. I mean, we, there hasn't been a break, you know, every day we're either delivering lunches or helping with the food pantry. So it's been really a, a blessing. Could either or both of you share, I've had a few people approach me asking, um, are these funds only available to people who are part of your congregation or part of your congregation, or even for those who are coming from other churches who may be aware of needs in our community, is there access uh, where they could direct people to apply for some of these funds as well? Could you just speak to maybe both of those questions? Right, uh, anybody can apply. Anybody who has a need, if we have the, if we have the fund, they can get it. Um, you can, you'll be able to find uh, the form. Uh, they can call any of our churches. We can email the form to them. And then we also put the form on our uh, the African American Council of Churches um, Facebook page and they can access it there. And they can, if, they, if we have the funds available, um, they'll be able to get the funds, no matter who you are. Yeah, same with us. We, we do have a form uh, at the light, lighthouseinmadison.org. It's bilingual, English and Spanish. Anybody can apply. Um, from the community, but, but the fund for, for us, something that we specified in the form is that people have to have a financial hardship specifically due to the COVID-19. So this is not something, I mean, like if you all rent the past five months, probably not because of COVID-19. <laughs> yes, indeed, yes, it's a lot of that, yes, yeah, a lot of that. And maybe one other question before we open things up generally. And thanks, Scott. We've got one question so far. If others on the call have questions, please uh, send them in on the chat and we'd love to have that. I, I think the hope today really is just to have a transparent dialogue. I think anytime finances get intersected with government or church or just, you know, our human hearts, there can be, uh, it can be easy for that to uh, cause confusion or strife. And, and we really see this as a beautiful opportunity uh, for unity. Um, can you just talk a little bit about, there's so many opportunities to give to different funds and a lot of different ones, uh, even within our own community. Um, how is this different or how is this, uh, you know, right. part of the greater solution versus adding to the noise? Right. I can, I'll go first, talk, talk about it. Um, um, we, as you say, so many funds have set up, so many people are asking for funding to be able to give to those who are dis. uh, disproportionate or does not have enough. Um, but this, we often see that people rely on the church to help community, but they don't want to give the church anything to help the community. And as I stated, off Mount Zion, we have no grant funding that comes in at all. All of our giving comes from our members. And, 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 <clears throat> and with this, we want to help uh, with a Christian's perspective. Uh, so we're also planning to, for those who have asked for help, we'll have their address, their email. Um, so we're planning to also send them some, uh, uh, like either like the smaller New Testament Bibles or some words of encouragement, not just giving them funds, but also trying to give them hope. And they'll be able to see some things about uh, the goodness of God. And that's, and that's what, and we're not proselytizing or anything, but we will um, let them know where it's coming from. It's coming from a church. Uh, and, if, and if they can take the funds, I'm pretty sure they can receive some type of documentation that speaks about who we are. And I think for us, you know, there's, there's two things. One is uh, I think this situation um, that we're living in, I mean, what an opportunity for the church to, to shine bright, you know, to get out of our walls and to, to be a blessing. And um, so, so that's why we said, you know, hey, we, you know, we, we need to go and help. We need to, to open our doors. We need to extend our hands. Um, but then the other thing, I see that there's a lot of people here from the Madison Christian Giving Fund. You know, and the, the reason why the Madison Christian Giving Fund was started was because there's not a lot of funding for, for anything with the Christ in front of it. Um, you know, so I know um, the United Way, you know, was raising funds, Boys and Girls Club, which by the way, both the Boys and Girls Club and United Way did help Lighthouse. So but um, but, but it's, it's, it's first time. You know, it's, you know when, when, when we even applied for the United Way, I was thinking it's going to be a big shot. But a lot of the funding usually doesn't go to Christian organizations here in Madison. Um, and, and, you know, and these, are, these are a lot of the people that we're serving. Um, you know, a lot of the people in need in the Hispanic community, in the African-American community, uh, 
this is these are these are cultures these are a group of people who are, are believers a lot of them have faith they are people of faith so so what an opportunity for the church to shine for the church to be the church and that's why we want to be part of that there was also a big segment of the population you know the christian that you know <clears throat> maybe want to give to something that is christian in this in this fund already i know that uh, gateway in middleton church gave high, black hawk you know, has been very involved, uh, City Church, High Point, Asbury Church, um, Global Presence. I mean, a lot of churches are coming together. It's about eight different churches, Mount Zion, Lighthouse, that are coming together to, to, to help in this way. And it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, that's great. Hey, before we take some of these questions on the side, and there's a number of really great ones right now. Um, Marcy, you had shared some just really individual stories of kind of the impact so far would you be willing to share just one of those stories because i think there's something about like stats that that can just kind of go in one ear and out the other but i feel like we're moved by stories and yeah. and that can be such an important part of just remembering yeah, I, I i'll share one one of the stories that i want to share in um part of that in the hispanic population you know not everyone but a, a big portion of the hispanic population here in madison uh, are undocumented and one of the issues that we have is some of the people here maybe are enjoying, you know, the stimulus check, or maybe they're going to apply for unemployment. But a lot of the undocumented population, they are not getting <clears throat> any stimulus check. They cannot apply for unemployment. And a lot of these families, they, they serve, uh, they work in the service industry, hotels. Um, they work in restaurants. They work in cleaning services. A lot of the restaurants are not open. A lot of the uh, hotels are, are, are closing down. So a lot of these people are losing jobs. And I had a, a gentleman, uh, and I sh I, I've i been sharing this story because it really touched me. Uh, this is a gentleman, he's an electrician. He actually has his own uh, business as an electrician. He's a Hispanic gentleman. And we have hot lunches every day from 11.30 to 12.30. And he called me, uh, and we, we advertise the lunches as for kids. You know, I mean, we, not, we don't say no to anyone, but we say these are lunch, kid, lunches for the kids. And he called from some prairie, and he said, can I come and pick up three lunches? And I said to him, you know, we're all the way on the west side. I don't know if he's working all the way from Sun Prairie here to the west side for three lunches. And really what he said to me was, you know, gas is cheap and I have gas in my car, but I don't have any finances to buy food. So I will go there and get them. And when he came here, I, I was able to pray with him. I was able to talk to him. And I was, I was so um, disappointed when he tells me that he started to sell all of his tools to be able to pay rent. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, and the tools, I mean, this is what you need to work. I mean, in a month or so, you need your tools to go back to doing what you're doing. Well, he's already selling his tools so that he can, he sold some of his tools to be able to pay for uh, April uh, rent, and he's selling more tools to be able to pay for May. But then I'm thinking, then things go back to normal in a month and a half. Now he needs money to pay rent, he needs money to buy tools, and now he cannot even get a job because he doesn't have the tools. So this is kind of what's happening with, with, this is just one of many stories. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Let me um, just ask a few of these questions uh, in order that they're coming in. So this is from Scott um, and I'll just summarize here. What are the, some of the most immediate needs you're seeing and do you have an overall goal for the funds? Uh, immediate needs we're seeing is uh, what, what I've been seeing so far, a lot of utility bills. Uh, and uh and rent and people are also asking for food um uh, and you know malzahn has a food pantry uh and so we're offering them to come to the food pantry and uh, i think we're going to uh purchase some uh, gift cards to uh some grocery store so they can be because no all the time you know it'll be nice for people to be able to pick their own food if they come to the food pantry they get what we have uh, we have a lot of stuff a variety of stuff but they often want to pick their own food some people uh, call us and we take the food to them and some of them have some dietary restrictions so we have to uh, um, just pick out the right stuff for them so um, i think those have been the biggest need and i think right now uh marcel would say a hundred thousand is the goal um right now yeah. And, yeah and and you know one of the needs same with Marcos, you know, paying bills, rent, food. One thing that I've noticed, like today, for example, we just outside Lighthouse, we have about 60 boxes uh, with food. But 
you somehow with the second food harvest and other organizations, you can get food. What I don't see a lot is toiletries, you know, so I would love to be able to give more like soap, uh, feminine products, uh, toothbrushes, toothpaste, laundry detergent, things like that, that we can give to, to families because that a lot of the organizations that are giving food is just regular grocers, which helps, is great. But if we can do um, the other end, you know, in toiletries like that, that would be amazing. The next question is from Nicola. Uh, what does it look like to distribute these funds? Uh, for example, are rent checks being written to the individuals or landlords, management companies? How does that work? For for us, the AACC, I think another question on here about three, we, we set a limit for $300 because we knew we will get a large amount of people and we knew we didn't have a large amount of funds to get out. Uh, so the limit was $300 per person. And so how that's working, they fill out the form and they will put on them the proof of the need so that's a utility bill uh, or rent or, or food, whatever it may be. And we're paying um, the, the lender directly. Uh, we're not putting any, any money in the people's hand. We're not giving them a check. The only thing we probably will give them is a gift card uh, for groceries. Other than that, we're paying um, the bill directly ourselves. And, and for us, uh, for some people, we are actually paying yeah, the lenders directly, utility bills. Um, we have helped a few people. Uh, for us, we don't give more than 500. 500 is the limit. We have helped a few uh, people with a check directly, but the issue is that uh, it's hard for some of the people um, to be able to cash those checks. So now we're focusing more on um, just calling landlords, um, paying the, the bills. And um, now that more funding is coming, I think one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to buy gift cards for uh, grocery stores because th there is something when you can go yourself to the grocery store and actually get the stuff that you want yourself so probably give you a hundred dollar gift cards to Woodman's or something like that that's great and if folks on the call again if you have follow-up questions uh, to these answers please just add those as we go uh, the next one here is this is from New Crossing Church how much is in the fund currently and maybe even add to that how much total is has been given versus how much has been distributed so far. Yeah, so all the, all the funding comes to, to Lighthouse. And then, you know, as, as we receive it, we've been writing checks. Um, I think that has been committed and people have called me and said, hey, a check is on the way and things like that. As of this morning, I think we had about 85,000 um, between com everything committed and what we already have through PayPal and checks that are in the mail. Um, I believe, um, I, I believe um, we've given the African American Council of Churches close to 30,000, right? Yep. About close to 30,000. And I know Selfless and yeah. uh, who collected 20,000, the initial 20,000, uh, they still send in 10,000 to each. So about 40,000, uh, if we include the, um, the money from Selfless and Vision that is in the way, is going to be available pretty fairly soon. And then as more money, almost every week, Lighthouse has been writing a check to uh, Mount Zion, to, I mean, I'm sorry, to African American Council of Churches. And do you know at this point, what is the average amount people are requesting? Whatever the max is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see, you know, a lot of people say help with rent, help with rent. And for a lot of the families that we're helping rent, it's about, you know, 995 to about 1200. So everybody wants about a thousand, you know. And you know, and, and just something to keep in mind, um, a lot of what we're doing is gonna help a lot of people maybe April or, or, or the beginning of May, but it's, we're gonna be able to help people this one time and then come next month. And I mean, I don't know if we're gonna be able to raise another 100,000 for the following month, but this is just almost like a Band-Aid to be able to help you know what's coming ahead so we're gonna to have to really pray and figure out what what's gonna happen because I, i've helped some people that they're just late in their april rent but may comes in a couple of weeks yeah um this one is about is there an online giving feature there's a couple of questions kind of related to this and uh I, and i can put the link up to your page and is the african-american council church is giving charitable receipts or Marcia, would that be coming from you? So Lighthouse, Lighthouse will do that. So all the donations can, if you go to, the, you can write a check um, payable to Lighthouse Church. And then on the memo, you can put uh, Psalms 46. 
uh, which, which I encourage everybody to read Psalm 46 during these times, and it's encouraging. So you can go to Psalm 46, uh, lighthouseinmadison.org. That's our website, and there's a link to Psalm 46 fund. Uh, you can give through PayPal, um, or you can send a check. So everything is going to go to Lighthouse, so you will get a gift receipt from Lighthouse uh, Church at the end of the year. Okay. And I think you just answered this. So it's, it sounds like the ways to donate would be either through check or through PayPal. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, have you considered needs beyond financial mental health, counseling, prayer? How do, how do those, I think the, those to me strike me as pastoral questions. So how does that fit into the overall work that's happening? Well, for us uh, at Mount Zion, not the, not the AACC, but Mount Zion, um, we've uh, been working with Anesis uh, and, um, and have given out their information. They're doing telehealth work right now for those, uh, if they have insurance, um, we're not paying for anything, but we are, we have sent the information out. Uh, Good Samaritan with uh, Rick Badger, um, he's also a therapist. Um, they're offering um, one free session if you don't have any insurance, and then they will give you a. Uh, <laughs> Kai, you all in my camera, girl. Uh, and so they <laughs> they would uh, they get one free session, and all, then also uh, so if they need anything extra, then they can let us know, and we'll try to help uh, with that. Um, then this Saturday, uh, we'll be on a call with um, um, the African American mental health providers. Uh, which is Dr. Ward, uh, Rick Badger, and Myra McNair will do something like this on Facebook and allow people to uh, ask questions and things of that sort. Um, so we're, we're really focusing on mental health um, as Mount Zion, but I, I can't speak for the whole AACC at this time. Uh, what, a, what a, was it mental health and what else? Counseling and prayer, definitely uh, we, 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 we're offering all of that. Um, uh, and as we continue to do this work, uh, we do a conference call Monday, Wednesday, and Friday uh, for prayer and devotion on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Uh, we have a conference call number that people can call in, anybody who sees it on our Facebook page or in all of our members know. Uh, so that's what Mount Zion is doing. I can't speak for the whole um, African American Council of Churches um, in that aspect. Yeah, and for us, you know, church continues, you know, so we've, we've been offering counseling and doing all of that to the community all the time. And other than the fact that we cannot meet here, you know, that still continues. We, we're still making phone calls. We still, um, we, with the Hispanic community, sometimes the issue is um, translation, but we still work with Central Hispano. Um, they have a lot of um, phone lines where you can call. So we're always telling people if, if there's something we cannot offer, you know, you can call there, but you know, we're available. Every person that comes and gets lunches, um, you know, we always, a lot of our volunteers are from the church. So we always ask them if, if they want to pray. Um, so far, you know, it's, no one says no, you know, so everybody, if we give, we, we give about 120 lunches every day and we pray for every family and um, something that I've done, uh, it's a lot, but but, you know, I actually write a personal message, you know, on each check, you know, on the receipt, you know, some blessing and encouragement. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, and, and one thing that we're doing, too, is just that we give them information, um, you know, about the church, uh, if they have, um, you know, any questions. But we also have, there's a, there's a, a resources uh, organization that has resources in Spanish. And we actually, we have those brochures and those papers outside when people come in. We do everything outside, but when people come and get lunches or food or a check, um, we give them information about resources. Um, this one, I skipped part of this question, so let me go back to it. If someone has received a grant, are they eligible to get a subsequent grant? Um, and do you have a sense of just kind of how this will be handled on a longer term? Because this looks like this is not the short game, but this is going to be... I think, Marcia, you, you already said this. This is going to be something uh, that's going to be meeting needs, hopefully. Uh, not hopefully in the sense of hopefully it'll last that long, but hopefully the funds will be available for months to come. So any, what does the long-term plan look like, and, and can people come back if they continue to have needs? Um, as, um, as I stated, um, for us, one of the questions is on, the, on our uh, application, have you received funds from another organization? 
I was just trying to keep track. That's all we're trying to do. Uh, if we have the funds and there is still a need, um, we're, I, I'm telling my people to give it out. Um, that, that's it. Uh, we have it. Um, and just, you know, but we don't want anyone to abuse it neither. Uh, so we want to be mindful of that. Um, but because it may be someone who has never received anything uh, from the fund and need it, and we don't want people to keep continuing to coming back, especially when we have so many resources in the community that can help um, with this also. But if we have it and we're able to give it, you can you can get it. You know what? One thing, and I I I think is is something similar with the African American community and the Hispanic community is that. The communities are pretty tight in the sense that a lot of people know each other. So, so sometimes I will get a phone call, for example, and someone says, "Hey, uh, so and so and so and so and so and so apply. I know that they're in need. They're struggling, you know. Uh, or other churches will call me. There's a family from my church that apply, um, uh, you know. Or I know this family that lives here. So there's a lot of communication uh, between that. I know, for example, um, there were some families that that go to Mount Zion, that go to our school. And um, and I uh, one of the one of the things my, my wife was looking at some of the applications and then she asked me you know uh, are they applying you know I'm on Zion too and here and I said well you know I don't know but that's something that maybe you know in the future we have to um, find out the truth is um, there's a lot of resources you know people can go and apply with the Boys and Girls Club people can go to Central Hispano uh, one of the things for example with with Central Hispano they, they, the Latino Consortium for Action they join forces it's a lot of different organizations Centro and the Latino Chamber of Commerce uh, and um, Latino Academy They're, they started giving funds they raised about 400,000 to give funds to the Latino community but they had to close the deadline of when you can apply. They already have over 2,000 apl applicants. So now people from Centro and people from uh, the Latino Academy, they actually call me and they say, hey, Marcio, there's this family. We know it's in need. They cannot apply with us anymore because we're closed. Can they apply with you? And I say, yes. So even though there's uh, funding in different places, um, the need is so much that, I mean, if Marcos gives them 300 and I give them 500, that doesn't even cover one month of rent. Yeah. So, but, but we do ask, uh, and we do have a process where the majority of people, if we don't know them, we call, uh, we find out where they rent, where they work, if they lost their job. So we, we ask a few questions, very simple questions. It's most, more, mostly we're calling just to see if we can pray for them, but then we ask a few questions. There's been a question, uh, and I think you've spoken to this, but maybe just a, a clarifying one. Are, are there two separate funds or are all the funds coming into Lighthouse? So how does that separation working? So all the funds come into Lighthouse simply, I mean, we just became like the fiscal agent. And then um, once they come to Lighthouse, half of the funds go to the African American Council of Churches and the other half stays with Lighthouse. Uh, and this is one I imagine we can kind of kick back to everybody watching, but are there, uh, has there been consideration of reaching out to grocery stores for gift card donations? You talked about using the funds that way. Um, has there been any work asking? And, and this is one I would, you know, just say encourage all viewers like that probably is a great ask for any and all, all of us, but has there been work trying to elicit donations uh, of in-kind or from businesses? Not We focus financial right now. Would you appreciate it if people did that on behalf of the fund? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Those are. I know, like Marcus, yeah, yeah. You, not, you have a food pantry too, right? So. Yeah, we we have a food pantry definitely, but like I said, you know, people probably want to pick their own food, and uh, the grocery stores are a booming business these days. Uh, um, so uh, they, I think they have an excess at this time. I'm pretty sure that they do. Uh, but I don't know how willing they would be to giving out gift cards. But uh, if someone knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody um, that can get uh, <laughs> some donations of gift cards, I think that would be great. And I think that's one thing I'll take back to the AACC and see if we can write up a letter and send out to some of the uh, grocery stores and see if they would be willing um, to provide it, um, um, some gift cards for families that are in need. And, and, you know, a lot of the, the ask really has been within the, the Christian community, you know, pastors that I know, churches that I know, um, you know, people who have given, you know, um, they're usually in the Christian community. I don't have a lot of contacts 
um, you know, outside, you know, the Christian community. I mean, I do, but, you know, the, you know, but it's, it's been mostly within the church. Um, but if people know people outside that, you know, can come and help with this fund, that would be amazing. That's great. I love, um, there was just an offer by United Madison to reach out to some of the grocery stores about these funds. So thank you all. That's fantastic. That's um, there's a number of different questions related to, are we recording this call? And the answer is yes. So our hope is uh, we'll upload this to our YouTube and then put it out over social media post call. Um, so yeah, we are recording it and we'd love to have you share it as broadly or with whatever audiences you have. That'd be fantastic. Um, we have time, I think for a couple more questions. So let me try to pick out ones we haven't hit so far. Um, this is from Catherine. Do you have better access to the undocumented community than other charities? That's on you, Marcel. Um, so again, we, we're pretty connected. So I have a lot of access to the undocumented community. I mean, within the school and the church, we probably serve maybe um, 200 families, you know, in the Latino community. And we're pretty well connected in the community. We do a lot of work with the Latino Chamber, we do a lot of work with Central Hispano, we do a lot of work with the Latino community, uh, Latin, uh, Latino Academy. So I, I know I know a lot of the people in the in the community and you know and people in the church know someone that knows someone so we're pretty connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah and I mean I would just add just knowing you Marcia this seems like an opportunity also for that collaboration versus who knows the most people and not that this was implied in the question but just that that there's so it takes so many of us working together um, yeah. to even scratch the surface. Um, I, I'm going to yeah, back up. Just, the, just, oh, sorry. Just, go ahead. Like in, in this regard, you know, it's not like we're you know in competition with Centro and all of that. Lighthouse actually gave a gift to Centro to help you know uh, in, in in the community. And, and before we actually started this fund, I was telling the people in the church, "Hey, apply at Centro," and then they closed. That's when we started the fund. But we, we have had a great community uh, relationship with Centro. We, uh, Lighthouse gave to the fund. Mount Zion has given to this fund. So, so the churches were already helping. Uh, and can I, can I say something about one of the questions that Fred asked about, you know, are other churches giving or um, directly or did they talk to the people? Uh, we have had both where some churches have, give a, have given a gift from the church but also uh, churches, and I'll say like Black Hawk, for example, they, they gave a gift, but they also put it on their website and they made an announcement. And, and I'll be honest, I mean, Black Hawk made an announcement on, on, on Saturday and Sunday, and there was a lot of giving Saturday and Sunday. Um, and I think that's what they've done, you know, so they gave an amount, but then the congregants gave another amount, which is, was great. And this is, uh, I missed this question earlier from Mike. Um, is there, this is not about the fun, he says, uh, do you, Mount Zion or uh, Lighthouse or other churches, want donations, food, food, toiletries, et cetera? And if so, yeah, where would you direct those donations? Uh, this time, uh, we don't need food. Uh, I think we have enough food, uh, but we'll definitely take some toiletries uh, and where to bring them you can bring them to mount zion or let me know and i can have somebody at the food pantry um that'll be willing to take it in lighthouse we do take food um so since the school is closed <laughs> my wife doesn't know this but we've turned part of the school into like a food pantry and um and we're, we're doing uh, we have boxes and we have a good group of volunteers that since we're giving lunches out at least once a week we're packing boxes full of food so if you have food, um, you can bring them to uh, Lighthouse 6402 Schrader Road. Um, Monday to Friday, there's usually someone here between like probably about 11 until like about two. That's the time we give lunches out. So anything that you bring, uh, we, can, we can use it. Could I follow up on that, John? Um, do you guys need volunteers for any of the work that you're doing, deliveries or handing out food or anything? We can take some, we, uh, we also take on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we pick up the MMSD lunches and we take them to the homes. The two, we have two housing uh, units uh, right by the church. We take two on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, we can definitely use some volunteers um, for that right now. Um, 
uh, we're using some of the same people and I'm afraid that they're going to get to the point of burnout and be like, yo, I can't do this anymore. Um, so, uh, so we definitely could take some volunteers is on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Uh, and it's at one thirty. uh, what they're doing now, initially when we start, we just got a lot of food, we knock on doors and give it to people who wanted them. And sometimes we'll have some food left over. So we'll take it to either the beacon or somewhere else. Uh, but right now what we set up a process, uh, where when we knocked on doors, we made sure that the people wanted the food when we came. And so we're bagging up the food. They come to the church, bag the food up, take it to the particular addresses that they have a spreadsheet for. And then, um, and limiting the contact with people just they're knocking on the door and putting it on the door uh doorknob and people getting the food that way so we can definitely use some volunteers on um monday wednesday and friday and if you're willing um you can just send us a message on our facebook page uh if you follow us on facebook or you can uh email us at mtz lifeline l-i-f-e-l-i-n-e at gmail.com so and and we can uh and i can uh, hook you up with people there you go mtz lifeline uh, thank you brie all right see i'm new to the zoom stuff this is this is so creative um <laughs> but, but we, you can email us there and we can send you a time and a place to meet us and we can definitely uh make that happen for you thanks brother. and for us you know thank god we do have uh volunteers and because we're trying to keep that, you know, distance between people, we don't want that many people, you know, helping at once. So, um, so maybe something that, you know, two months ago or three months ago, we will do with eight volunteers. This time we do it with four so that we can stay away from each other. So, so we're good as far as volunteers. This maybe relates to a couple other questions. And I think we have time probably for about two to three more questions. Um, do you see the Psalm 46 fund evolving in something long-term representing a broader Christian outreach in the community? So this is less about response now and any long-term vision or ideas of where this might go? Honestly, I can't speak for Marcio, but I'm trying to figure out how to make it from day to day. <laughs> um, and uh, we haven't really, uh, we haven't talked about it. I think it'd be some great uh, for the community, especially for two different cultures um, banding together to help um, a community that's in need. I think it'd be great for our community to have something like this in process uh, so we can continue to meet needs of our community. Um, but as of right now, um, I have not spoke to Marcio about it, um, but, but that's that's uh, that's my part. What you got, Marcio? Yeah, and for me, I mean, if this is gonna bless people, I'm always about helping. Um, uh, I don't know if I will have the time in the future to just run specifically these funds. Uh, but, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, if there's a need and, and we can offer help, I'm, I'm happy to continue with this. Uh, one of the last questions on here, I think, unless I missed any, is does Lighthouse School use the script program for that 5% discount? Uh, the example being if they purchased $5,000 at Woodman's, they get 40 or get $5,000 worth of gift cards for $4,500. Is that something you currently utilize you know i know we used to back in the days uh and we haven't done it um so no we we haven't done it i'll have to confirm with my wife who is uh by the way if you don't know me she's the principal of the school but um but i don't think we have been using it um lately oh, i thought your wife was just in charge of you or something that's why you kept saying i gotta refer to my wife <laughs> she is oh, okay <laughs> i'm just the face of lighthouse <laughs> she tells me what to do uh, here's one question I did miss earlier. How are you evaluating if their need is a result of COVID-19? For us, most of the applications that we have received are because of employment. So I, um, we have been asking, you know, where they work, uh, and when they lost the employment. And, you know, um, in our cases, for most of the families, it has been easy, um, because we know the places that have closed or the hotels and things like that. So that's that's how we do it. We haven't put a. We just asked uh, how has the pandemic pandemic affected you. So we haven't really put an emphasis on it as much, because like I said, a lot of people were hurting before this ever happened, and this just probably took them over over the edge where they was trying not to get to, or they was making it week to week. You know, some people say from month to month, but they was making it week to week already, and then this interrupted a lot of things. So we just like I said, if we have it, you can get it. 
we just we just got the funds from Marcio. Friday was our first disbursement of ten thousand dollars, and then yesterday he gave us nineteen thousand. Um, so um, we'll be sending funds out hopefully uh, starting tomorrow when we'll start um, sending the funds out. So we're meeting tonight and then tomorrow uh, we'll be getting the funds out to the people who have already applied. So uh, if they sent it in, they give us proof of it. That's all we need. We just need proof because we don't, we don't just want to give anybody money. That's, that's, that's my thing. Um, we we want to meet the need by paying the bill. Well, I think we've exhausted our questions. These have been some great questions. Uh, how can we be praying for you two? There's the last one. Uh, personally, as well as the work you're doing uh, corporately. Right. I, I, I really would like you to pray for my family. Uh, my mom, my aunt, and my sister, all of them um, had the COVID-19. Uh, my mom came out of the hospital on last week, Wednesday. And on Sunday, she said the doctor told her if she could make it, um, to day 10, she could beat it. And on Sunday, she was able to walk down the steps and fix her own breakfast, uh, when, which was a horrible thing for her to even go up one one step because her lungs were so messed up. But she's recovering well. My aunt is recovering well, and my sister is showing mild symptoms. Uh, so I actually continue to pray for my family. Uh, I actually continue to pray for uh, me also. Um, it's hard preaching in an empty church um, and I miss my people, but I understand the severity of what we need to do. Uh, so pray for me on that and um, just for wisdom and knowledge, um, especially in this time when so many are pushing to reopen the, uh, the country, open the state back up and to know and make sure we're doing the right thing for our people that even if they open things back up, um, we still protect our people from being um, experiencing this dreadful disease that is very, very painful on your respiratory system. And I've witnessed it through my mom and my family. So that's why I'm very careful of any interactions and trying. And also, one thing I've been looking at and thinking about also, uh, after we come out, the, out, out of this, a lot of people are going to need a lot of face masks. And there's a lot of people in our community that won't be able to afford them or they'll have just makeshift stuff. Um, so looking at and be asking the government too, you know, how can we provide face masks for our community? Uh, so because some places probably won't even let you in if you don't have a face mask. Um, so that's what uh, I think we need to pray for that and just look look at that also. But please pray for my family, pray for Mount Zion, uh, pray for the uh, African American Council of Churches, all of our churches that we may continue to do the work in the will of God. I appreciate it. Yeah, and for and for me, and also you know, I will say even. Marcos would agree with that. Just uh, be praying for our churches. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of these funds, 100% of all of these goes to the, to the families that need it. But, you know, the churches itself, you know, we still have to pay the rent. We still have to, you know, pay the electric bill. Um, and uh, for Lighthouse, for example, uh, we're doing a lot of giving online now, but we didn't do any online giving before. Everything was, if you came to the church on Sunday, uh, you gave. Uh, so the finances have gone down a little. Um, at Lighthouse, I would say about half of the congregation at Lighthouse is without jobs right now. Um, so pray wisdom on, I mean, God is in control uh, and he has a way, but pray wisdom on how to, um, you know, uh, for me as a pastor on how to lead uh, the church. But also uh, for my wife, you know, she is the principal of the school and school is different now, you know, so try to figure out how to do school, how to work with the staff. Right. And um, wisdom on, on that. Um, and then pray protection uh, for us. Uh, I've noticed that I've been outside probably more than what I should because of trying to help with the lunches or food or something here and there. But um, just wisdom on, you know, uh, in everything that we do, protection. Learn how to sit down. That's what, that's what, I, that's what I need, to learn how to sit down. Yes. Uh, how to do that. <laughs> pray for me on that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you both for being uh, on this call and for your leadership in our community and just the example um, you're setting, I think for all Christians, I just, I'll speak on behalf of Collaboration Project. I am um, proud to know both of you and just encouraged by your work and, and um, the way that you're being faithful to, to Christ and to loving the most vulnerable around us. So thank you for that. Um, thanks for everybody for taking some time out of your day to learn about this. Um, I mean, my encouragement, I'm from collaboration project standpoint would be 
Now that you know more, I just uh, want to invite you all to prayerfully consider if this is something that you could be supporting within your congregation. I know that you and your communities face hardships and needs too. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, this might be an opportunity for us together to be united in serving some of the most vulnerable. I've been reflecting a lot on the end of Acts chapter two of that beautiful picture of the early church coming together. And one of those defining qualities they had was sharing resources what, with one another and that powerful line so that none, no one was in, with need. Right. Um, and I just feel like, man, this is an opportunity for the church to live that out afresh. And what a beautiful witness that could be to our broader community. Um, but it really takes unifying together from our different contexts and our different um, theological boxes to be united in the love for Jesus and our greater community. So I, I, I see this fund as one mechanism to be able to live that out. I know there's others as well, but uh, thank you both for being here. Uh, Brianna had the great thank idea. You of too. Thank, thank you for putting this call together and right. your support. Um, uh, and this, this, this is great, you know, that collaboration project and yourself are doing this. So thank you. Oh, absolutely. Our pleasure. Uh, and Brianna had the great idea of ending our time by reading Psalm 46 as our prayer to you and for all of us. Uh, so if this is not a good psalm, this is on you now. No, I'm just kidding. Jerk, church joke. Uh, so Brianna, could you just close this by reading that and then I will end the call. So thank you all for being here. Uh, if people, sorry, one last thing. I guess if people have questions, best way to contact you uh, moving forward, preferred form of communication for both of you. You can email me at MD Allen, A L L E N. Bree, you going to type it in? MD Allen, <laughs> M D A L L E N 1982 at gmail.com. I check my emails often, so yeah, you can email me. And my, my email is, if you want to type it in, is M Sierra, S I E R R A. JR Jr. at lighthouseinmadison.org. So M Sierra Jr. at lighthouseinmadison.org. Thank you. All right, thanks. All right, Brianna, would you close our time? Yeah, and for those of you who don't know me, my name is um, Brianna Ilene. I am the Content Curation and Ecumenical Innovation Coordinator with the Wisconsin Council of Churches. And so we collaborated with the Collaboration Project on trying to help expand the circle even wider and bringing people together because that's what we do as well. And so I'm um, excited to be with you all on this call. But let's hear uh, from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roam and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It oh, yeah. shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come and behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. God makes war cease in the ends of the earth. God breaks the bow and shatters the, spe the spear. God burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Amen. Was it good enough, John? That was beautiful. Right. And thank you all. Have a great rest of your day. Right, thank you all. And Take care. We'll all be in touch. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you.